Hello, all. A warm welcome to everyone tuning in to the Oracle IAM Insights session today. My name is Mark Templeton, and I am a Principal Technical Support Engineer here at Oracle. Today, we will be covering the Remote Diagnostic Agent, or RDA. We will review what the Remote Diagnostic Agent is, what its components are, and the differences between them. We are going to cover several, but not all, of the RDA commands that are useful in both understanding and running the RDA. I'll provide several of my Oracle support notes that are important to know about in regards to the RDA. We will also discuss what report is generated when the RDA is run and where it is located so that you can provide it to Oracle support. Lastly, we'll have a short demo on the RDA. So what is the RDA? It is a non-intrusive command line diagnostic tool that is run on your system to collect data. It gives a clear picture of your machine's environment and settings that can also be used to troubleshoot an issue with Oracle support. Both you as a customer and Oracle support can use these results. The RDA is available in over 20 plus different platforms that can be run to collect this data. Some Oracle products actually have the RDA installed with it. Whatever the latest version of the RDA is available at the time of a pro new product release, it is included with, as part of the install. This RDA can also be upgraded at a later time. This allows you to have the latest modules and profiles from Oracle. The RDA has several components. These components are broken up into both modules and profiles. It is good to understand the difference between these two items. Modules are the smallest part of what can be gathered. They are items like operating system, network details, user profile information, and a specific Oracle product. Profiles are a collection or grouping of several modules. This makes it easier to collect several items at once. The profiles are put together by Oracle support teams for common modules needed to troubleshoot or work through an issue in a service request. We will take a look at this during the upcoming demo. Some useful RDA commands are listed here. First and most important is the RDA help. It lists all the parameters and provides a brief description of each of these parameters. The RDA also has a manual or man page. These can be run for each of the specific parameters seen in the RDA help to get more information. We will review a few of these during the demo. The RDA is used in a two-step process. The first step is to set up the RDA on what to collect, whether it's from a module or a profile. The second step is the running of the RDA so that it collects the information that was specified during the setup. Here are several My Oracle support notes that are very helpful in understanding where to download and running the RDA. Since the RDA is based on Perl, if Perl is not available on the system, we have listed a note here that allows you to still run the RDA to collect the valuable information needed to work or troubleshoot an issue. The report generated when the RDA is run is not encrypted or password protected. It can be reviewed by anyone who has access to the file system or is provided the resulting zip file. After the RDA is run, an output directory contains the results of the RDA if you wish to review it. There is a two helpful HTM files that are generated that brings up the RDA report in a browser which uses frames. It shows the RDA version, the overview of what was collected, whether it was run from a module or a profile. And we'll take a look at this during the demo. So let's have the demo now. I have downloaded the RDA on my system into this directory. First, you have to unzip the RDA and it will create its own directory, which you can go into. Here you can see 
the files that are generated or created from unzipping it. Now also on this system, I do have three Oracle products installed. Looking at those, I have an Oracle Access Manager, an Oracle HTTP server, and an Oracle Unified Directory server. If I go into the Oracle Common Directory, there is an RDA directory there. If I do a listing here, it's the same files as what I have when I unzipped it. The difference is the version. If I do a version on the one that was installed with this Oracle Unified Directory, it tells me that it was RDA 19.3. If I go back to where the RDA that I unzipped and do a version on it, it tells me that it's 20.4, which is a newer version. So it will have more updated modules and profiles. Okay. So now if we look at the RDA help, you can see here the pro, um, parameters that can be used when running the RDA. Some of the important ones that I want to point out are the dash M for the man pages, the dash S for when you need to do the setup. It does have a lowercase v for verbose mode and a lowercase p for when you're specifying a profile. If you do not use the dash lowercase p, it assumes that you're running it for a module. So if we want to look at the RDA man pages, just do a capital M and we will do it on, let's say the operating system. Here it shows you what is collected during this particular module, which it pulls in the system information, the Java version, the Oracle home Java version, whether or not this operating system is a container type environment. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if we wanted to run the RDA on a particular profile, we just specify the dash P and I'll specify the identity manager profile. And here you can see that it lists all the modules that it is collected in this profile. There's one for the identity manager, the web logic server, the installation information, the network, the operating system, et cetera. All right. So what we are going to do is actually run the RDA setup for the operating system and we'll say network information as well. Now, when the first thing it's going to ask is for an our Oracle home. So in this case, I need to provide an Oracle home that it's going to use, and I'll just specify the OUD. So let me copy that and paste it in. And part of this module was the net network, and it, so it's asking if it wants if I want to do ping tests, and I'll just say no for the default, and the setup has been completed. So from here, to actually run the RDA, I specify no parameters. It will look for the configuration file. And it shows you that it's beginning. It's looking at the configuration file. It's running it for the operating system module. The network, network module will be next. It loads it, and then it's ending. And now it is zipping up the results, writing out to the output directory, and it shows you this information here. 
So if I wanted to review it, it gives me where it is placed, which in my case is the output directory. It also tells you the name of the zip file that was generated that if you need to provide it to Oracle support. And it is included in the normal RDA directory, which you can see here. Now this format of the name is going to be consistent. It's always going to be capital RDA underscore output underscore and then the host name of the machine that it was run on. So this host machine is OAM01. So now we can look at this RDA and I'll bring up a browser here. This is the RDA directory that was created during the unzip. If I go into the output directory, usually the start HTM file is all the way at the bottom. So when I click on it, it brings up the results of the RDA. You have three frames. You can see here in the first one that the version was 20.4. We are selecting the overview menu, which gives you a overview sub menu. And then the results of the report system or settings is what's listed in this third main frame. From here, I can look at system information, uh, target information, the collected files, et cetera. So you can see here that I collected the operating system, which allows me to look at system information, CPUs, memory, et cetera. And I also have the network options that or module that was run. And I can see the interface, the TCP IP settings, network performance, et cetera. Now I have also run the remote diagnostic agent against an Oracle Access Manager, which is a more lengthy RDA. So in this RDA results, you can see that it pulled in the operating system, user profile, performance, et cetera. But you can all see here that it pulled in the Oracle Access Manager product. So here I can go in to look at the module features, uh, it pulled in the WebLogic server overview, where you can look at the JDK versions, et cetera. Um, you can look at the Oracle installation. Uh, you can look at the OPatch for the current home. Uh, this is important to understand that when you provide an RDA and specify a module or an Oracle for an Oracle product or profile that is for an Oracle product, it will include the RDA um, O patch information. So here I can see that I have one patch installed against my Oracle Access Manager, and this is the patch number. Part of the Oracle Access Manager profile, it pulls in the administration server. So I can see all the information for the admin server. It also pulls in the Oracle Access Manager managed server information. Here, it pulls in some of the diagnostic logs for the OEM server, the access log, et cetera. So it will pull in a lot of information um, that can be provided to Oracle support in troubleshooting an issue. So, uh, as you can tell, you can run this on your machine, look at all the data, see what is provided, um, see what's collected, and then you can upload that to a service request so that uh, you can troubleshoot an issue or work with Oracle support. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's Oracle IAM Insights session. We look forward to seeing you at the next one.